some kids, flashlights, a tunnel, and the darkness of night. These ingredients never fail to be a recipe for disaster. Published in December 2012 by Timothy El Shebu, a group of kids decide to enter a sewer at night with nothing but flashlights to guide them. They should have expected what came next. They crawl into the depths of the tunnel, waiting for the creature to make himself known, but when it does, you wish it hadn't. The figure springs towards the boys and all mayhem breaks loose as the entire group tries to scurry out of the tunnel at once. When they do finally break free of the tunnel and its creature, a sigh of relief washes over them. Many viewers of this video feel the same way. The Potato Llamas wrote, Reminds me of when there's a spider hiding under a rock, and the second you lift it, it runs at you. But what was this thing crawling deep in the tunnel? Some think it was a monkey, judging by the noises the creature made. Others, special effects. I don't know what it is, but it's made me want to stay out of sewage tunnels at night, or at any time, really. So years ago, I analyzed a creepy video of a mysterious handprint found in this family's haunted home in a hard-to-reach area really high up in the corner above the stairs. Years later, their house still appears to be haunted as ever. This wall has since been painted, and the exact same print is still there. Okay, so the wall does in fact look to be painted a different color. The original video has a yellow wall and now it's gray. It's the same distance from the ceiling and has the same impossibly long fingers extending from an oblong palm. More like the paw print of a creature than that of a human. So I guess the work of a demon is not out of the question. With that said, I guess they could have stenciled the handprint and recreated it over the new paint job. But that seems like a lot of work and there's should be some mistakes. The handprint in the two videos looks nearly identical to me, and therefore I think this follow-up video is probably paranormal. And judging from their evidence, it looks like this paranormal entity, ghost, demon, whatever you want to call it, is not going to stop haunting their home anytime soon. Derek Desso Daly finds himself in a darkened cemetery on a 24-hour challenge with some friends. There's only some basic snacks and a small flashlight to split between the three of them, but they feel confident nothing serious will happen. Derek barely gets into the cemetery, and already he hears strange sounds that I don't think can easily be faked. I know that I don't see anything past this room. What was that sound? Hey man, there's somebody walking right there, bro. Where? Derek claims to see someone off in the distance, though I personally don't see anything. Still, he turns off his flashlight and quietly walks away to avoid detection. Other than that, nothing else happens until around 3 a.m., at which point the strange sounds return, even louder this time. Board, yeah. yeah, we have a Ouija board and we have a. Oh, no, no. They start playing with the homemade Ouija board and think they see something move in the trees. Then they think they hear footsteps. It's hard to say if they are just being paranoid or really experiencing something paranormal since nothing special is caught on camera. Later though, when they begin chanting a spell to speak with any nearby spirits, I can definitely hear what they are talking about. Eventually, one of them gets separated from the group and is covered in red when he returns. He claims to have fallen, but something about his story sounds off. Ah, what happened? Something fell. Something falling on its own seems quite unlikely, making the claim of paranormal activity even more plausible. The Art Man channel is full of various light-hearted adventures taken from all around the country, but there's one video from his stay in Carpinteria, California that's way different from the rest. Art is wading in the water when he sees the last thing any surfer wants to see a pointy fin barely poking above the surface. Uh, what? What the f***? That's creepy. 
Art watches in stunned silence as a sizable great white shark swims by the nose of his boat less than 10 feet away. It's not full grown, but it's still large enough to make a meal out of one of his arms or legs if it so desires. Fortunately, the shark moves on without much hesitation, and Art makes a beeline to the shore. If this is a different kind of shark other than a great white, please let me know. That's what it says in the video's description and title, but I honestly can't tell for sure. YouTubers The Proper People published this exploration of an abandoned psychiatric hospital in April of this year, 2018. The psych hospital was built in the 1800s for poor folks who couldn't afford healthcare and has been abandoned for more than two decades. The place certainly looks old. Whole pieces of wallpaper are chipping from the walls. Below the hospital are tunnels connecting to the surrounding buildings. The crew didn't enter the tunnels because unlike the psychiatric hospital, those buildings are still in use, but they did come upon a fallout shelter. Many of the rooms they come across are empty. Some are locked, making the crew and their viewers curious about what's inside. But perhaps the most curious rooms are those with piles of the Sykes Hospital supplies and equipment. Chairs, tables, walkers, buckets, mattresses all thrown together in one place. They even encounter an old green tub with an adjacent seat used to lift disabled patients in for bathing. And further on, they arrive at half of an elevator car. For some reason, there's something so unsettling about an open elevator shaft and an elevator not where it's supposed to be, Michael says. It gives you a bad feeling. Well, Michael, this whole place gives us a bad feeling, so I'm going to stay as far away from that hospital as possible. Carmen's home is more haunted than ever by the previous owner, a man who lived there for 50 years and whose spirit refuses to go away anytime soon. I've covered Carmen on this channel before, but she has sent me more video evidence in an exclusive update you'll only find on Chills. The more she communicates with the apparition in her home, the more it seems to understand her. These videos were taken on three different spirit boxes, and the same male voice talks to her each time. I'm gonna turn this off and listen, okay? I'm gonna listen. We should talk. I'm trying to talk to you. Is there a demon in my house? Can you tell me what color my shirt is? Over time, its powers grow, and it seems to feed off her energy and the attention it receives. What's your name? I am the flashlight went on. And after a while, it doesn't even need paranormal equipment to whisper to her at night. One night while opening the front door, she discovers what it is that wants her to feel such fear. A shadow figure with demon horns stands over her for a split second and then it's gone. And then there's this unexplained lights that follow her from room to room. I thought she was shining a flashlight against the wall. But look again. It starts out small at 2 minutes and 8 seconds. Then it gets in her face and goes away. At no point do you see a ray of light coming from her flashlight, because she's not holding one. If this is random dust, then explain why it's popping out of the chest of this creepy doll and heading straight towards her camera. The paranormal activity seems to be growing more intense, so I'll keep you updated with new events as soon as they happen, which I'm sure they will be soon. And if you're wondering why Carmen gives the ghost so much attention, it's because ignoring it apparently puts it in a foul mood and causes even worse things to occur. Mature footage was shot somewhere in an underground sewage system. The cameraman is presumably a maintenance worker who is wearing a chest cam. Little did he expect to find a humanoid down there with him. The video begins with the cameraman seemingly frozen in place. The camera is very still, as if the maintenance worker is too afraid to move. Maybe he heard a noise and is waiting for a creature to reveal itself. Suddenly, a pair of floating eyes peer at him from the distance.
The eyes appear to belong to some sort of nocturnal predator. They reflect so much light that all you can see are two gigantic white dots that are roughly as wide around as flashlights. The humanoid does not appear to have much experience with humans and seems apprehensive as it peers around the corner. It decides to run away and the cheap camera cuts out before we can see any more of the chase. The creature seems incredibly fast and probably got away, but exactly what happened next is anyone's guess. The video footage survived, so the cameraman probably did as well. Then again, maybe they recovered it from his dead body instead. There's just not enough information out there to say for sure. Josh is afraid of heights and his family is giving him a hard time about it. They bet him some money that he won't be able to stay on the ledge of a watchtower for long. He takes the bet and this is his immediate reaction. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Can't please work it. No. No. Why not? Uh, you gotta you gotta be out for one whole minute. Josh's family ups the ante to $10. If he can make it all the way around the walkway, pale and shaky, he inches his way across the platform, timidly clinging to the wall at times to keep from falling over. At one point, it looks like he isn't going to make it much longer. I can't escape out here. Okay, I'm ready to turn around. No, nope. nope. I can't do it. There's people in the way. I can't stand up here for this long. <laughs> but he summons all of his strength and eventually makes it full circumference. If you have a fear of heights, then let me know if you would be willing to walk around this tower for 10 bucks like Josh just did, or if it would take way more to make you budge. Published to YouTube by In Jamaica in August of 2017, this big almost catch occurred at the Hellshire Bridge. The camera approaches a large gathering of onlookers surrounding the bridge in question, where cars have pulled to the side of the road to watch the big event. Two young men have managed to nab the croc by the snout using a length of rope. The crowd cheers as the crocodile thrashes about and soon escapes his captors. They try again, throwing the rope into the murky water. After a few failed attempts to recapture it, they give up and the crowd disperses. Many in the comments below blame the lack of catch on the crowd, saying they're making too much noise and scaring the croc away. Perhaps they're right, but if you knew this monster was lurking below, could you suppress your fear? The passed on must be transported to their final resting place, and whether you realize it or not, sometimes you're traveling with them. Shared on Twitter by Mr. Creepy Posta, this scary video showing an apparent lifeless body in the cargo hold on a plane was originally posted on Reddit. The question is, why is this body not contained within a casket? Many in the comments are freaked out by this footage. Some refer to the 2008 Thai horror film Forbia, a film about the transportation of a princess's lifeless body by plane. This short clip, however, was not taken from the movie, and it's not clear if it's genuine or staged. I think it's real. What do you think? Jordan Powers sees something in the sky, and all his mom can do is get mad at him for it. What? What are you looking at? She doesn't see anything and thinks that he has lost his mind, but we can see them just fine. Mysterious lights, five of them all flying in a strange formation. Jordan describes these unexplained lights as silver in color and months later still has no idea what they were. It happened in Kelowna, a city in the Canadian province of British Columbia. Somebody from Virginia says they've seen the same lights and describes them as hiding in the clouds. I'll admit this short 13 second video is not a lot to go on, but what little evidence there is does look unedited and quite bizarre. Hopefully I can find a longer video taken by somebody else on the same day to confirm this sighting is real. The University of Texas once lost a hundred human brains. The brains which were acquired in the 80s for scientific research. 
sat in jars of formaldehyde in the basement for over 30 years. Decades later, the school decides to move them to a different part of campus, only to find most of them were missing. What's even more bizarre is that all of these brains were donated from an old Texas asylum. Among them was the brain of Charles Whitman who in 1966 ended the lives of a dozen university students. After taking aim from a tower, no one knows what happened to them for sure, but according to rumors, students were taking them every year to use as props for Halloween parties. The main point is that the minds of over 100 inmates have gone missing, and no one knows what is currently being done with them. Okay, this video is bizarre and just plain really weird. A kid on YouTube named Nature the Bee is making a random video about his cat. Little did he know that he caught a mysterious figure on camera. And that's the end of the first trailer. I hope you've enjoyed it. Creeping around the house is a strange, ghostly apparition. It was not part of the skit he was doing at all and really has no place being there. Plus, the way it looks from behind the corner is beyond creepy. You can see some more scary stuff when you zoom in, like a freaky frowning face that the uploader thinks could be a ghost or a demon sighting caught on video. I think this video could be edited, but if not, then I'd say his house is definitely haunted by something paranormal. Has anything creepy ever turned up on one of your home videos? YouTuber Tink spotted something that stood her hair on end while watching hers back. See if you can spot it. Did you see it? Something scurries past beyond her shoulder to the left. Watch closely. Let's see it again, more slowly this time. Tinks says she was home alone at the time. I feel like it moves too quickly to be anything of this dimension. Is it something from another world? Let me know what you think in the comments. This haunted home has visible spirits stalking about. Published by A Sip of Fear in January of 2022, an unsettling figure was captured in the glass during this paranormal investigation. After setting up some cameras in this haunted home, activity begins pretty quickly. A wardrobe door is captured opening and closing, and later a bang causes the paranormal investigator to jump out of his skin. In another room, a stationary camera captures a figure's reflection in the glass door of a shelf. And again, the wardrobe door opens and closes repeatedly. Is this spirit trying to tell us something? Or does she just want to be left alone? Over a year ago, I briefly touched on the saga of Joseph Chan Sloan, a YouTuber who for years was haunted by a spirit from 2011 to 2014, but I didn't get to cover his whole story. Three more videos in particular are worth getting into, but first I did some more research and discovered a blog with years worth of updates. Joseph first noticed an apparition within weeks of letting his girlfriend move into his apartment, so I suspect she may have brought something that had attached itself to her. Soon each of them felt constantly watched, especially in the shower of all places, and it got to the point where they both thought they were getting pranked by each other. But one day, as Joseph was taking a shower, he heard his girlfriend come into the bathroom. The topic was already on his mind, so he explained to her that he thought the apartment was haunted. But then the figure on the other side, the one who he thought was his girlfriend, disappeared mid-explanation. From that point on, Joseph 
Joseph began setting up his soul camera in different places to document the spirit, and that's when things ramped up to the next level. On April 16th, 2012, Joseph announces out loud to whatever's listening that he's turning in for the night. So we're just gonna film this area. I had, like I said, my lighting issues were horrible, so I'm leaving some lights on this time. So if there is anything, hopefully we'll catch it. Anyways, guys, have a good night. See you in the morning. Orb activity begins at 2 minutes and 12 seconds, carries on for about 6 seconds, and then abruptly stops. The kitchen is eerily quiet for over 40 seconds, and then the stovetop burner turns on to its highest setting. This happens out of nowhere at the 3 minutes and 17 seconds mark, but at 3 minutes and 14 seconds, an orb shows up in front of the oven just 3 seconds before it turns on. Could this be the ghost in question caught on camera? Joseph was asleep, so this event could have burned the whole place down if anything was still on the burner, which is maybe what this ghost was trying to do all along. A full seven months later, on November 28th of that same year, Joseph puts the camera up on a high ledge to show as much of his living room as possible, floor to ceiling. He again announces that he's going to bed and turns out the lights. It's 11.46 p.m. Anyways, uh, we'll see what we get and if we get anything. So, uh... I'll see you on the morning, and uh... Everything looks normal for roughly two minutes until a shadowy movement materializes over by the entertainment center. It's hard to notice even when circled, but when you do see it, it looks way out of place. I don't think it's camera pixelation because none of the other darker areas of the room are moving like this. And at approximately two minutes, a large, lonesome orb floats upwards from that part of the room and disappears. Exactly 10 minutes later, at 2 minutes and 12 seconds, this speaker falls over and lands not too far from where the orb originated from. Obviously, no one is around to knock it over. So if this is fake, how was it done? On October 1st, 2013, Joseph made his final YouTube video, letting everyone know he has moved to a new apartment. He thinks that changing his location has stopped the spirit, but considering it may have attached itself to his girlfriend when she first moved in, I'm not so sure it worked. This part at 4 minutes and 30 seconds further proves my point. It could be his camera making a squeaking noise while being adjusted, but it sounds a lot like the laughter of a small child. But, anyways, let's see if we can do it like this. There we go. And when you compare it to his normal laugh, it's definitely not the same voice. <laughs> And that's pretty much the last anyone's ever heard from him. The last update comes from his blog on July 25th, 2014, promising more videos that sadly never came. I don't know what happened to him. No one does. But suddenly dropping off at the height of your fame is not reassuring to say the least and makes me wonder if something terrible happened. Do you want to play a game? Post it to the ghost subreddit by responsible at 8836. This guard in Mexico often hears there's noises at night while on watch. He recorded this one while on patrol. While walking the grounds at night, he heads around the building when what looks like a man's head pops out from around the corner. The guard chases it around the corner, but there's nothing there. The Redditor also posted a frame-by-frame -frame video to better see the figure. Many in the comments are clearly surprised. Some point out there are no feet, while others suggest it's a grey extraterrestrial. Still, others say it looks like it's playing a game. Do you want to play? I suggest that guard heads back in the other direction. When the paranormal comes after you, do you stick around for more? Published by Han Kardisler, that's what this group did and they weren't disappointed. As the paranormal crew is searching an abandoned school, they find something frightening inside. They're in one room examining things when a sound is heard from the other end of the room. A moment later, a large beam of wood is shoved off a table to the floor. They cross the room, closer to the action. <laughs> Daha küçük mü? Arkada bakana bir şey var mı? 
So I'm good. And as they're talking, another large piece of wood comes flying out one of them from the door. Still, they remain in the room as though nothing happened. Are these guys crazy or are they unfazed because they're so used to this stuff? Whatever the case, they'd best run. The Phantom is getting more aggressive by the minute. Florida resident Candace Spivey was shopping at Target when she was approached by a stranger. This man started a polite conversation with her but something was wrong. The same man had done the same thing to her earlier at a grocery store. Do you remember running into me in the grocery store? No, hey, where are you going? Come back. Hey, get this guy. Stop him. Stop this guy. Stop him. Stop that guy. Call the cops. Call the cops on him. Call the cops. As soon as she confronts the man on it, he takes off and she follows him out of the store. Apparently, this was a registered offender who secretly recorded women. This just goes to show you never know who the real person is behind a polite stranger. Hopefully, this man stopped his horrible actions after being publicly confronted like this. A YouTuber named Alex Hayes and his friends find a cool-looking stone perch overlooking the beach below. The good weather has them in high spirits and it isn't long before they are playing around near the ledge. Alex wants to impress everyone with a headstand, but it doesn't exactly work out as planned. Holy sh- oh. Don't do that to me, Al oh my goodness. Holy oh. Pause here and you'll see how close Alex was to tumbling over. He barely catches himself with his right hand, and if his right leg went back any further, then he would have definitely lost his balance. Thank you so much for getting me to 50,000 subscribers here on my Clips channel. If you want to support, please press that subscribe button. Let's get to 60,000 subscribers next. Thank you.